My braid is slashing bird. No quarter. I am going to be a odd comfortable and hollow <laughs> from start to finish. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Outside of the Box, or as as this segment will heretofore be known as Bot Buddies. Um, so I am here with Jay Lee, who I just met at the last event, like officially, but I was very drawn to your robot game over, and I felt compelled to have you on to talk about it. Awesome. Well, hi, everyone. I'm so excited to be a bot buddy. This is so exciting. Um, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. Um, hi, everyone. I'm Jay. I run a YouTube channel called Kinegetsu, and I also brought um, Game Over, sponsored by GameU, to uh, the recent uh, September 30th NHRL event. Um, we're kind of proud of it. As um, uh, To my knowledge, it is still even though it didn't technically work. That, that was a big caveat of it, um, is that technically I am not a competitor either because I never passed safety. Um, but uh, it, to my knowledge, it is the, I still think the only servo walker design to hit NHRL. Um, to, to my knowledge, there has not been, there have been other servo walkers in other leagues. Um, I, I, I believe there's um, a 12 pound um, one in in sort of the the lower weight classes, and there's Big Chomp, obviously um, from 2020 in BattleBots. Um, but other than that, it's very it's a really slim uh, kind of like group, and I found out why in the last uh, event. So yeah, but it's great to be here. Yes, um, it is a slim group, but I would say that you're in very good company. And I think that there's probably a reason why a lot of people don't attempt this is it seems really hard. Yeah, I mean, here's the thing. In my mind, building anything is hard. Like, did, making a sandwich can be hard on the right day, right? So, like, if you're going to build something, you might as well go big with it. That's kind of my philosophy. Um, but yeah, like I've, I, from all, all that I've seen, most servo walkers are built by engineers who are way more experienced and better at their job than me um, on teams of like, you know, professor level, like grad students and like experts that do this like for a living day and night. Um, I decided I'm going to try and do it Um on my own for uh with this company sponsorship um that <laughs> i'm really surprised they let me keep <laughs> i uh, when when i proposed it um i guess i should give some background yeah I'm, I'm oh, yeah excited. absolutely <laughs> yeah for those who don't know what game over is um i have the the carcass of it here um as you can see it used to be a quadruped it has now since been a uh, kind of um modified to um have less than four legs but um this was commissioned uh from me by a company called game you um they're not affiliated with me and like what i do um officially i work for them as a teacher and um uh, they sponsored the build but when i went to them with the idea i was like hey a bunch of our students love combat robotics and when i asked them what do you think a combat robot would look like? Like if you could build one, what do you think it would be? You know, my students are like ages eight to 15 and the eight-ish range is is kind of like, oh, well, of course it's got to have like four legs and laser guns and it's going to have like a, a laser sword that can cut through things. And I'm like, okay, but like, what if we actually tried it? <laughs> and I went to them with that proposal and I said, hi, um, I know that I'm just a teacher here. But if you sponsor me to go to this new bot um, tournament thing that's upcoming called NHRL, what if we brought their first ever legged robot? And <clears throat> I really expected like a knockdown drag out, like this is why this is a good idea. This is why like we should try. And the committee that was uh, sponsoring me was like, yeah, no, go for it. That was it. I was like, 
that's it. And they're like, yeah, just send us like a list of like everything that you want and need and we'll pay for it. And that's when I thought, oh, the problems are going to come because I gave them a list and it was, I think like $3,000 worth of materials up front. And it's just me building it. So like, they're putting $3,000 in me not messing it up, which I did. Spoiler alert. <laughs> and they just looked at it and they were like, yeah, no, this is fine. And then afterwards, when the bot turned into that, um, and I don't know if you guys have seen our fight. It was rough. Um, that, that was when I was like, oh, they've got to make it so that I don't go back. And they're like, when's the next one? I was like, what? And they're like, yeah, no, you're going to go back, right? And I was like, yeah, well, we could add legs and uh, or we could use wheels instead, make it a little more reliable. Our factor of reliability is really low. And they're like, no, 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 no. You can do the walker thing again, right? And I was like, sure. <laughs> um, so it's kind of like it's been this really crazy roller coaster of like developing it, and um, I'm hoping next one goes better. But yeah, 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 for sure. I mean, I can tell you like there was definitely a lot of attention at the event. Like this is something people were really excited about. And of course, as I mentioned, when we spoke there, the first thing that I thought of when I saw it was Mark Satrakian's robot, Stalker, um, yes. which I did get the opportunity to see in person and stand very, very close to. And so cool. <laughs> it's just, it's ridiculously cool. Um, and you had said that, that that was part of the inspiration for it. Oh, absolutely. Um, Mark Citrakin has done an incredible job uh, with Stalker. I remember seeing kind of the first film, uh, like evidence of it. Um, I think in like, was it 2020? It was sometime, uh, a couple, it was a little bit ago. Um, I don't know if it's been that long yet, but Time is messed up in my brain. Um, but yeah, I remember seeing that. And first off, Mark's robot is insanely complicated. Stalker is a very, very different robot than what I have. I believe that like all of those servos were custom made um, and they are all um, controlled. Like instead of just like a PWM, he 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 mentioned in an interview he uses like a an audio editing software that like controls the frequencies that like run through this thing and that's how he like codes it i was like that's absolutely nuts but it also kind of inspired me because i was like if you can do that i can do something kind of like it <laughs> like someone's doing it um it is it's like it's like it's not totally crazy like this isn't science fiction um and that was kind of all i needed to be like yeah no i can do it um and we saw how that turned out but <laughs> i mean the fact that you built it at all um i mean i i'm i'm personally i am not at that level um myself i'm lucky that i had a working beetle um and that was certainly thanks to to many other people who helped with that but it you know i love i love the ambition and the innovation because you know i i talk a lot on my show about the fact that i really hope that what this past season of battlebot showed is that the meta isn't the be all end all that you know there are, are other types of robots that can break this idea of what a winning combat robot can be um and you know that's that's why i love what you've done even though it didn't work the first time but i would say for most people it doesn't work the first time yeah no um definitely i mean i had told you know myself and kind of people who had eyes on this project that um you know from what i can tell even building your first like beetle is very difficult like in, in of itself like when you were posting like all of your stuff about poison apple like i was like that's so cool like just like working through your first build like you know even you say i i even just build like you know a, a normal robot i'm like that's still insanely impressive to like have something like to build anything like i said everything is kind of hard to build um it's just a different set of problems that you take on when you're when you're designing something and i was like well if we're kind of expected 
to suck on our first try anyway. Why not suck for a reason? I don't know. And then, you know, obviously it could have gone deeper in the bracket maybe if we had done something more conventional. But I think that at the end of the day, this is a spectator sport, right? Like it's, you know, there's 160 competitors and the top four make, you know, qualifying. And so I'm like, okay, it's a little bit like being in an F1 race with like 160 cars. It's like, well, if we're a no, no, no one team from Ohio, like, how do we stand out? What do we do? And that's why at the event, I was talking to you a lot about theming. And it's a lot about like, what's your robot going to do? Are you coming into this like MMA or are you coming into this like WWE? Like, are you going to like try and show like showboat and like make kind of like a name <clears throat> off of the aesthetic? Because that's a whole thing in combat robotics. Um, you know, like some of like, the more indelible robots in like the brain aren't necessarily the ones that work the best. Um, and then there's the opposite side where it's like the ones that work the best obviously get screen time. So I was kind of like, well, we're not going to be the best. So let's just push everything we can into like making this as interesting as possible. And that's why I love Poison Apple was because I was like, the theming is so strong. You have like a clear image, I guess, of what it is. Um, I don't know. I do like that side of it. And I think that the end goal of this mech is obviously my tagline is kind of like, I won't stop till mechs are meta, but also I would really just like to have a competitive Walker robot. Um, anything that can compete, I think is a win. For sure. I, I would love for it to be a competitive mech robot. Um, yeah, it's just, it's so exciting. Um, and as you've kind of alluded to now, there was definitely times in that competition after I was already out where I was like, I would love to grudge Chainsaw Kitty because yes. I, just, I love Kazaya. Um, and I just think like her robot is fantastic. And I was like, I really want to do this, but like, I got through a match with Loophole. Yes, which congratulations. Unscathed, unscathed That's from, insane. Yeah. So I'm like, I still have a working robot with very little damage. Do I want to do that? Like, do right. I want to have it completely obliterated? And kind of pushing answer, your luck a little, right? Yeah. My answer in that moment was like, probably not today. Um, when I got, uh, yeah. when I get to a point where like, okay, I'm done with Poison Apple. I want to move past this. <clears> then maybe I'll be like, let's sacrifice it to, to the robot gods and just like. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because that's exactly what we said. It, we use the same word, sacrifice. It was not a grudge match. It was a, it was like feeding time <laughs> is the more accurate uh, representation. So I completely understand. Um, if I had wanted to take game over home, I definitely would have been like, absolutely not. We're finding someone else to deal with. Or Kesaya is a very, very nice person, um, as I'm sure you know. Um she was just like, do you really want me to, like, go in and, like, you know, such a pretty bot? And I was like, this bot was not meant to see October. You need to make sure it doesn't. <laughs> um, it was kind of just like, and my my camera person at the time, Steven, um, I was talking with him and he's sort of our media director. And I was like, what does the company want? Are they going to be mad if I destroy this, like, thousand dollar robot that we've spent the past you know two months designing and he was like no get rid of it it cannot come home in anything less than a bag and I was like I know just the person <laughs> and um uh yeah from there it was it, the rest of history I was so so excited that I got to grudge match Chainsaw Kitty there um the whole team at Sleepy Anime Girl Club is amazing um and it was so surreal because they've been like my favorite on the nhrl circuit for like since debut since i found out about nhrl because you know it just represents like everything that i love about like the sport um it's obviously more conventional design than what i do but um you know it's just 
They have strong theming. They have a great concept. Like I love Chainsaw Kitty is basically like an idol group that has a robot <laughs> and I love it. Um, it's like, they have a great concept. They're super competitive. Like I would give like, like rookie of the year to, to, to them um, just out of the gating, like almost qualifying like three times, um, which is insane. And they're, I don't know. They're just cool. It's, it's, it's that perfect mix of like, they have a unique concept and they're, they're leaning into that, but they're also cleaning house. And I love that. That's amazing. Yes, absolutely. Um, I mean, it's, it's really kind of like my, how, how I have been for probably forever when I said, okay, I'm going to actually start competing now. And I've been like, I want to fight Jameson go like yeah. I, keep, I keep saying that um and if it actually happened you know I don't know how I'd feel about it in the moment but I mean at the same time it's like when you have a builder that you have a lot of respect for and just love what they're doing in this sport it's yeah. like if you could be destroyed by anybody that's the person that you want to get destroyed by <laughs> I know I'm like it's like it's like the most perverse form of like schoolyard crush, right? Like you just kind of fixate on that person or that bot and you're like, I really want to fight them. I don't know why. <laughs> like, I know I have no shot, but this is so cool. Jameson go, um, you know, uh, you know, uh, all of the, all of the high level builders, like the Calvin Evas, the, the Corey, uh, you know, all of all of them they are on my list of like people i want to fight but they're kind jameson go to me is kind of like the terminator like to to me like everything he does is just so like well engineered and you can really tell just like people look at it on the surface and they see silent spring and they're kind of like oh it's like uh it's, it's kind of like tombstone right like it's kind of like that uh in like the shape maybe <clears throat> but like if you look at it He's got a, like, modular front weapon system that just locks and loads in. It's it's really intimidating. It's like a magazine on a gun I when I see it. I, that's what I think. I just click, and I'm like, oh, it's ready to kill. <laughs> um, everything. His shuffler design is, like, one of the most efficient I've ever seen anywhere, not just in the sport. Um, and just, like, everything I do, I'm kind of like, if I ever fought Jamo, I would be kind of worried of, like, any mathematical imperfection in my build because I know that like what he does he tweaks that thing like crazy and I'm like I know that's been tuned to like professional levels meanwhile me I'm kind of like I couldn't even get my 3d printer to work which is why game over looks so bumpy <laughs> I'm like I'm like it's not exactly a fair comparison but you know I totally understand the the want to to fight it well, and I, and I think that like, it's gotten to this point for me, because you talk about theming a lot. And I am a huge fan of the ham robots that he makes with Aaron fan. Like, just, mm -hmm. I, I love them. And so I'm like, I'm not an engineer. And while, you know, I think that I can build a competitive robot with assistance from people that I know, you know, that know more about that stuff than I do. I'm never going to be like at an engineering level as good as that. However, from a creativity <laughs> level, uh, you know, now I think with this like Apple idea, I'm leaning <laughs> heavily into these Apple themed robots. And so JMO and Aaron have their hams. I'm going to have yes. my apples. <laughs> I love it. Like, honestly, I think because <clears throat> robot combat is sort of a niche sport. It's not... A, I'm not going to say sort of, it's a niche sport. It's not like baseball or um, if you, anyone else in the audience lives in Ohio, you know that Columbus football season is ridiculous. I can't walk outside my apartment right now without um, being swarmed by people. Um, but, you know, what gets people into those is sort of like the personalities and the optics of a team. You know, we have colors, we have mascots, like you have personalities on a team that like people really like. And I think that in order for combat robotics to grow, it has to be more than an engineering fair. And, you know, I love, you know, I've 
I'm in engineering school. I love engineering. I love the people who who do it. I really appreciate their hard work um, behind all of it. But also, this board needs people who aren't engineers. I hate to tell you guys this. We're kind of boring. I'm not going to lie. Like, our field is fun for us. But, like, if you've ever seen, like, an engineering classroom, it's not, like, fun. It's, like, it's cool. But it's not, like, a sport. I think we need people who like, you know, don't have engineering backgrounds, um, who like, don't always like go with like, what is meta or what is efficient, even. Um, that's kind of what I wanted to represent. So like, honestly, when you say like, oh, I don't have an engineering background, technically, neither do I. Um, I'm still in school. So um, like, we're on the same level in my head. Uh I think that it's awesome that like this sport allows you to not be, you know, mechanical, electrical, mechatronics engineer by trade. And instead, you know, we have artists and teachers and people who just really like the sport and machinists and like people of really diverse backgrounds who make really diverse, interesting bots. And that's something we have that other sports don't. <laughs> That is very true. Um, and, you know, speaking of that, it actually, because I, I I wanted to, to bring this up because, I mean, it's technically not a walker like mech in the way that game over is. But I think the closest thing in NHRO we've seen to a walker type of bot is positively hysterical um, because of the way that it just... Pause, my <laughs> beloved. <laughs> oh, um, my God. You know, I can't and, believe and, and this talk without about talking about him. Yeah, Tom is also, you know, not an engineer and what he's been able yes. to do in a short amount of time. I mean, like just super innovative stuff that people love. And I think that's amazing. No, it's I I didn't get to meet Tom um, because he's social media's darling. Like <laughs> everyone wants to talk with Tom Parkus and Positively Hysterical. Like <clears throat> that their whole team at Panic is like everybody like inundated them um poor my my poor camera person Stephen uh poor Stephen was like <laughs> the whole time trying to get like an interview and um uh just th there's so many people who want I mean you see it at the event like there's a pause on it seems like every horizontal surface that isn't taken up by another bot um it's sort of the mascot of NHRL at this point and I love it it's so just, and it's not designed to work like the weapon is is a, like a bouquet of flowers or a squeaky hammer and I'm like it's just so perfect for bringing people into the sport um because it, it's so like people look at it and they're subconsciously engineers are like I could do that and you know fans are just like it's a little cat I love it it's I don't know, a huge inspiration for kind of what Game Over's concept essentially was. Um, we basically made the same thing. It's just that we used four legs instead of, you know, one stomper. And our hammer saw had a spinning beater bar at the end of it. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm pretty confident that if we were to fight Positively Hysterical, Pause would have won. <laughs> but, you know, there's... There's just something to be said for such a cool robot. I, I really admire it. I admire like every builder that I met there. It's really hard for me to talk about them succinctly because the whole time I was there, I was just like, I'd never been to an NHRL event live. And I was just like, this is so cool. This is like the only reason I would ever come to Connecticut again. <laughs> no offense to Connecticut. It's just, I didn't have, I we didn't have a lot to do on the day we were there off. Um, I don't know. It's, but yeah, it, it's just so cool. Yes, I, I mean, it's one of those things that like, I didn't know about for a long time. And I'm kind of sad that it took me so long to even be aware of it, because I've followed BattleBots for years. And I mean, I still love both. But I think there's different reasons, you know, BattleBots is just like a bigger, grander yes. type of spectacle and things like that. But NHRL is so pure in like everything that they do and it's really it's competitive but it's also so much about fun and that yes. comes through like everything that they do and you know not that battle bots isn't but obviously there's like it, it's just it's different 
No, absolutely. The The way I think of it is, have you ever seen Real Steel? I can't imagine there are a lot of combat robotic people who haven't seen Real Steel. Um, yes. Yeah, I think of battle bots as like the end fight, you know, with Zeus and like there, there's a big crowd and like there's like a bunch of like corporations looking down from boxes and stuff. It's very cyberpunky, um, you know. It's very official. It's like a boxing match. That's what I think of. I think of like oh, it's like a title weight fight. It's like you know Ali versus Liston. It's that kind of thing. Um, you know, NHRL to me is more like like the fights in Big Hero Six. Like they're kind of punky. They're underground. Like I would not be surprised if people bet on these. Um, I kind of thought about it, but then I was like, bot fighting is illegal. <laughs> uh, no, it's. It's it's just like it's such a cool aesthetic. I love that it's just like anyone and everyone. It's meant to be accessible. And they kind of lean into that, like kind of like we're alternative. We're kind of like not like um other robot combat leagues. We have a one page rule sheet. I thought that was the funniest thing that like part of their marketing is like our rule page is one sheet. And then you look into it a little and it's like one, it's like homework where it's like it's one question, but there's 20 parts to it. So you're kind of like, it's not really one sheet, is it? <laughs> uh but no, I I I love the the free flowing style of it. And I think it lends itself really well to uh a lot of of bot theming because you can kind of be yourself a little bit more I don't know yeah no I agree um it's it's not you know they obviously have a a production aspect to it but it's not with battle bots where like discovery probably has opinions about how they want things to be framed and you know it's, yeah. it's more like crafting a story but I think at NHRL it's more open where the builders have that chance to craft their own story and it's not people like framing things in a certain way for them so much that is very true i will say i would like like you know how at the beginning of battle bots you know uh, they have the announcer and like they go on and they're like in this corner like and they say something silly about this bot it's bloodsport or like it's so it's you know it's Belgrade. i would love that i kind of, i love the three two one fight robots fight but like come on I would love it if just like <laughs> if Luke sat in the box and was like, and from way downtown Columbus, we have the walking welterweight game over on top of a mini bot <laughs> sliding into first position. I don't know. I think that would be really great. I, don't, I love the showmanship aspect of it. The funny yeah. thing is that I'm less of an engineer and technically I have more experience. Um, I teach online and um, uh, that means that I basically just make content. Um, I film a lot of my lessons. And uh, before that, I was a sound technician in a theater troupe. So most of my work is actually weirdly in production. Uh, I don't really engineer a whole lot, as you can tell. So maybe Game Over reflects that a little bit. Hey, like no matter what, I I love it, and I think it just you know I it's rare. Why well, I, I should say I've only been to one other NHRL event, so for me to be like it's rare, but like I I don't often see in the times that I've been there people really just coming over and wanting to like look at a robot, like a specific robot. You know, it's it's more just kind of like going around seeing everybody, but it's just it was something different and unique. And, uh, you know, I, I still want to see more of that. I mean, because you never really know, you know, you look at past events and see a robot like Hot Wings, which I love. Yes. So oh, much. So cool. Do yeah. really well, you know, and <laughs> yeah. it's just like, you don't, you never know, like come up with something creative and you don't know how it's going to do. It's just, it's, it's you know, that whole rock, paper, scissors thing. It's like a little loot box, right? Like you kind of get it and you're like, oh, is it going to be good? <laughs> like, is it going to, is it going to be like the S tier thing or are we going to have a, <laughs> um, anyway, but um, yeah, you yeah. just, you don't know. And like, you could have rope, like, you know, people thought that Lynx or Booty Brigade was going to win the whole thing. You know, I definitely did. But I was like, in the camp. 
matchups, you know, you don't know who you're going to get matched up against. You don't know if something is going to suddenly happen with your robot that you don't expect. Like you really don't mm-hmm. know. And so I really love that aspect to it that just you might as well be as creative as you possibly can um, mm-hmm. and go out there and like try that. Mm-hmm. I mean, really, the only reason why I decided to make a robot that was, you know, intended to be competitive is because I love Minotaur and I wanted to celebrate right. a robot that I really Absolutely. love. So. <laughs> Yeah. And I had a lot of people who were like, I'm so glad you're making a walker. It's so much cooler than all these like lame lawn mowers. I was like, okay, but like, that's unfair too, because I love conventional robots. I never want people to think that I build mechs because I'm like, oh, like, this is what a real combat robot is. Like, that's so lame. (laughs) I don't know. I, I love the design of like, like Minotaur is an awesome robot. It looks so menacing. And I'm like, it's just this like black square with angles and a big gold spinner. I'm like, and the sound, it's amazing. I was like, oh, it's just so cool. And I'm like, yeah, get inspired by those too. Um, you know, this is a video idea, so I don't want to give away too much, but I was kind of thinking about like what makes a mech um, and like what makes people kind of invoke that feeling. Um, Because when you think about it, in games like Armored Core, if you play Gundam games, if you watch anime, they don't walk a lot. If you've noticed, they really kind of just like fly around and like there's like a thruster on the back usually. And uh, you can look around at this like through mecha media. Um, Notice how little they actually like have them running or walking because it looks a little awkward. Usually they'll have it, the legs and arms, because they're posing or it's like, it's good to like, do that. The reason we like Max is because it reflects us. It's very easy for a person to project onto a humanoid thing. That's why we put little googly eyes on, you know, regular combat robots and like give them little hands like on tantrum. It's because we identify with those things. And I think the cool part about NHL is you can really see (laughs) that mech mindset of this robot reflects who built it or the team that built it or whoever did it. That's why I love theming. That's why I love stuff like that is because it lets me see more of what you want. Even if it's something as simple as like a kit bot, you know, I've had people that are like, I just, you know, I slapped on like a, I slapped a thing on an SSP. And I was like, well, yeah, but you also took the time to assemble it. You painted it. You like added your own twist on it, obviously. And even if you didn't like add anything mechanically advantageous, it's it tells me something about you, your design philosophy. What do you do? Even if it's just like the simplest gray box, that tells me you're probably practical minded. You care about competition. You care about like this thing. You don't care as much about aesthetics. Maybe you want to put a lot of it into efficiency. That tells me something about you. And in its own way, it's kind of its own aesthetic which I think is really cool. I don't know. It's just one of my favorite things about it. No, absolutely. I mean, you make a lot of really good points there because, you know, I I think I can say for most of us, like you don't put really any amount of time and money into doing something like this unless you really care about it. Um, I mean, because it, it isn't, even if you build a cheap robot just to get the internals and stuff like that going, it's not, cheap like it's not 20 bucks you know yeah no it it takes time to work on you know getting it right like even getting a working robot is a really hard thing to do so I mean it's something that everybody's really passionate about and I I think that's one of my favorite things is just it's not just a eh I'm just doing it just for whatever like yeah everybody's really into it yeah people put themselves into it sometimes literally okay for those of you who are watching uh Christine's podcast right now um I don't know if she, I don't know if you made this public, but uh, she came to the event with um. You had like an Apple like costume, like a whole cosplay, and it was the coolest thing I have ever seen. Like I, 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 I used to be on a cosplay circuit. I used to love doing that, and I was like, why the hell didn't I do that? Like why didn't I think of that? Um, it would have been so cool to have like a themed outfit. Um, you know, because you're part of the robot, right? Like when people think of poison apple now, they're going to be like, 
they're not gonna wonder, oh, I wonder who pilots poison apple. They're gonna be like, I think it might be uh the woman in the apple costume. It might it might be her, <laughs> you know? Just stuff like that. It makes you remember memorable in people's minds. And I just think it's a great idea. So I hope you know you have started a trend of cosplaying at NHRL, and I will be doing this uh soon. <laughs> It's, you know, when you have to bring all of your passions in into something, um, you know, because I've gotten a little bit into that as well. I mean, as everybody knows, if it's not obvious, like, I'm also a huge fan of Avatar The Last Airbender. And if David Jin had not already cornered that market with naming his bots after Avatar things, I probably yeah. would have done that. Um, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, it's, it's like, I... I I tried to bring that same energy into building a robot because, you know, that's something that I don't know how to do. And, you know, I, I think it's, you know, you don't have to be creative. I mean, there's some people who just like to build robots and they don't get into the creative aspect of it and that's fine. But I mean, I just think mm -hmm. that it's more fun to just take it all the way. <laughs> I totally agree. I'm, I, I just don't know what I would do, you know? Like in my brain, I'm kind of like, what would I wear for like game over? I was kind of thinking like we could go like the e-girl route and I could just like make like a PlayStation controller skirt or something. I don't know. I was kind of like, I don't really know how I would lean into this because I also have a sponsor and obviously I work with kids. So I'm, um, uh, you know, I got to keep it like PG and also not do anything insane, um, which is kind of why I started doing my own thing with Kinikitsu. Um, so you guys can hear it first, but hmm, Game You sponsored me for another version of Game Over. They want to keep the concept pretty similar. Um, and that's great. I love working with Game You. I think their mission is really cool. Um, they're probably one of the best employers I've ever worked for and worked from some pretty bad employers. <laughs> um, oh, wow. Um, and I, as much as I love them, I was telling Steven this, as much as I love working for GameU, no matter how good working under someone else is, you'll always kind of be under their wing it's always kind of be kind of like their their thing it's a little like if I always had my dad come to like events with me and like say he helped like no matter how little he actually helped or how little he's actually involved it's always gonna kind of be his robot um or at least a little and then maybe that makes me selfish maybe it makes me a little egotistical but I also knew I was kind of already those things. So um, I don't know. I really want to build a robot that's kind of my own on a channel that's my own, that's not affiliated with my sponsor. And, you know, I don't know how PG your, your thing is. I'm so like, I, I won't say it, but I want to be able to say the gamer word. I want to be able to say F and like stuff like that um, on my own channel, building something cool and um, doing you know, ideas that are even crazier than like maybe this one. I actually think I didn't go crazy enough with Game Over. Um, Cause like the thing is it has, it has four legs, which means there's like four big points of failure. And I had a thought while I was flying home. I was like, what if I just made it two? What if I just chopped it in half? So uh, that's kind of what we're working on right now. Me. Um, Game U was like, can we add more? And I was like, perfect. We'll go in opposite directions. Um, but yeah, I don't know. That's kind of my, my thoughts on starting Kinikitsu and moving forward with Game U. See, when you said add more, I was thinking going back to the laser sword idea. And I was like, does, does NHRL prohibit laser swords? Is that specifically in the rules? <laughs> they unfortunately do prohibit lasers, which really made me sad because I I wanted to put a little laser sight on Game Over so I could aim the hammer saw. It would not add anything except weight. Um, but like I had a, a student who was like, what if we made a like a laser guided like hammer? And I was like, that's literally the coolest thing I've ever heard. It would be about as useful as putting a laser pointer on an actual hammer, but we could do it. And unfortunately, they do not allow lasers as they can escape the box and blind people which is not cool I, I would rather not blind someone 
That is true. And that is unfortunate because now I'm like, why could, why could we not make a version of positively hysterical that also has a laser and it's like the cat chasing the laser. <laughs> so good. And I <laughs> really, really want to see it. This is why the funny thing is when I was, um, in high school, I actually had an idea with a couple of my friends. We wanted to make a robot combat league. Um, but the rule was that you weren't allowed to have wheels. <laughs> that was like our, that was going to be our shtick. And it's kind of funny because we were also like, we'll like post it online and like stream it on Twitch, which was like a new site at the time. Like not a lot of people had done it. Um, so honestly, I feel like I should get royalties from NHRL um, for, for their idea. You're welcome. But um, no, and one of our, our ideas was like, well, you know, they put them in these cages and, to like keep them safe. But like, what if, so that you could, because I, my friend was like, why aren't people allowed to like use like fireworks and like gunpowder fired things? And I was like, probably because it would break out of the cage. And he was like, well, that's okay. What if we just put it underground and there are cameras that are aimed at it? And now I can see the logistical problems with that. But like, maybe in the future, NHRL, if you guys want to take more ideas, I'm open. I'm very... I'm very, I'm a font. I'm merely a vessel for, for God to work through. I love it. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I definitely, I definitely appreciate that because I probably have way more ideas than what I am actually able to execute on as a, as a person. So. Yes, please. <laughs> Out of the box NHRL uh, idea collab. When, when are we going to get the, uh, when are we going to get the the underground boxes? And I think I was talking with I was talking with Kazaya and was like, has gamer subs not reached the robot combat scene yet? Um, because I personally see a lot of potential in gamer sub flavors uh, based around combat robots. I think that would be cool, but maybe I'm the only one. I I just want to drink a thing that says blue Loctite on the on the little canister. I think that would be fun. Well, hey, I mean, we'll see, we'll see what happens in the future. Um, yes. But yeah, no, I like, I, I'm super excited to see more of this Walker style. And I'll be curious to see, you know, if anybody else decides to attempt it, because I think it could be really exciting and just add a different dimension to, you know, what we've seen already. Um, you know, love the creativity can't wait to see more um but i i hope people are really interested and you know like definitely continue to check out jay lee and the the the, the channel and everything else like that and um yeah but for for anybody that's watching please leave your feedback in the comments because i'm really curious to hear your thoughts on this type of robot and what you know what we could potentially see um but you know like subscribe all of that stuff. Keep following the channel. Um, plenty more to come. And we will certainly see everybody the next time. All right. Awesome.